2 Chronicles 22. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Azariah his youngest son king in his stead. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to camp had slain all the elders. Now that's back in 21 verse 16. Moreover, the Lord stirred up the, against Jehoram, the spirit of the Philistines, and the Arabians, and they that were near the Ethiopian. And they came up into Judah and break it, break into it, and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house, and his sons also, and his wives, so that there was, there was never a son left, yeah, never a son left to him, save Jehoaz, the youngest of his sons. So that, that's what happened with sin. He left with one son. Now Azariah, and it says in verse seventeen, Jehoaz. It's the same person, just a different name. And that's that's throughout the Bible. Yeah, you know, some people have names, and they have nicknames, or they acquired other names for themselves. I mean, it's happened. There's no contradiction. So. Forty and two years old was he when he when Azariah began to reign, and he reigned one year. Wow, in Jerusalem. So everything we're going to read about is one year. His mother's name was his mother's name was also Azariah. We're going to read more about her. She's the only queen king. She's a wicked, the daughter of Amri, which is also the family of Jezebel. So we got pure wickedness running right now. The wickedness that, that no one's ever named their daughter Jezebel. And Jezebel you read about in the New Testament as her wickedness and her whoredom. Is now carried over into Judah. All the 450 prophets of Baal. All that worship. All that Elijah did on Mount Carmel. Has now come into Judah and Jerusalem. Jehoshaphat went over there, joined firmly with, with Israel twice. His son goes into the, and bounds with them. And marries into the family. And his grandson, here he is, he's involved with the mess and the sins and the wickedness. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, wickedness. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. So mom taught him how to do wrong. Mom taught him how to do evil. Mom is the wicked one that raised his boy to be wrong. And she'll find her dead. She'll have to give an account one day of what she's done for her son. Wherefore, he did evil because of what his mother taught him. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. Like the house of Ahab. What a comparison. That Jehoshaphat in two generations, his son and his grandson, has mingled themselves among abomination and wickedness. And then now the two families are connected by marriage. And all God can say is, it's just wicked. And when I'm going to compare the wickedness of this king, Asahiah, the only worst thing I had to compare him with is Israel. And it's wicked. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab. For they were his counselors. That's the first time that word shows up. Counselors. After the death of his father. So his mom... Is counselor to do wickedly that the 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 rulership, the kingship, the authority of Ahab, and the kingship in the kingdom of Israel is also teaching them even worse. This king Azariah is being taught in the ways of Baal. If you look at uh, chapter twenty-one, verse twelve, who shows up real quick? Uh, Elijah. That's the same guy that said, hey, there's going to be no rain for three and a half years. This is the same guy that dealt with Ahab and said, listen, you bring your prophets of Baal, I'll bring me of God. We'll go to Mount Carmel and we'll find out who's God. And we know that God wins. We know that Elijah 
gets the power of God and burns up the sacrifice. That is the same family we're doing with right now. This is the family that, that Ahab says, says a neighbor, oh, I love your herb garden. Well, it's a violation of law. You can't sell that ancient landmark. He goes home, has a pity party, cries up against the wall of his house. I can't get boo-hoo-hoo. And Jezebel comes in, I'll take care of it, dear. Aren't thou the king of the nation? I'll take care of it. She signs letters in his name and has Naboth murdered. This is the same family. And we're going to see it in the mother of this man who is a murderer. This is why God said, this is, you got to watch out for your family, especially the lost ones and the worldly ones. They're only going to drive you deeper into trouble and away from God. Christ said, the Bible says in the New Testament, what concord do you have with Christ or with Billy God? you got a choice. You can choose God or you can choose wickedness, sin, the world, and all that, and still be saved. But destruction. He walked also after the, country, after the council and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel to war against Hazel, king of Assyria, at Ramoth Gilead. Now, the Tel Dan, T-E-L-D-A-N, that was found in 1993, the inscription backs up what we're reading right now. Not that we need that, but archaeology has proven what we're going to read right now. There has been written, inscribed evidence of what we're reading about this battle. And the Syrians smote Joram. Jehoram and Joram is the same man. Again, you got two names. Nothing like that. I, I know someone, I'm not going to say anything. But you know, you know, someone's named Robert. You call him Bob. You got someone named Samuel, they call him Sam. Like that thing. And he returned to be healed in Jezreel. Because of the wounds which he had been given, which had been given him at Rema. When he sought with when he fought with Hazel, king of Assyria. So he got wounded. He goes off to a, a place, a city where there was known for healing. And Azariah, the one we're talking about of Judah and Jerusalem, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram. I'm gonna go visit him. The son of Ahab at Jezreel, because he heard he was sick. He's more than sick, he's wounded. And the destruction of Azahiah was of God. Look what God did. By coming to, to Joram, for when he was come, he went out with Joram against Jehu, the son of Nimshai, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. Now, Jehu, if you remember, he's a king. But before he's made king, God has anointed him as a Sabbath. I want you to go there. I want you to tear the house of Ahab apart. I want you to get rid of him. And Ahab does the job. While Ahab is doing this, as a higher, the king of Judah is having fellowship and marrying. And there's one big happy family that God is angry with this family. He says, Jehu, go kill them. So as a result of Je uh, as Azahiah hanging out with Jehoram, which is an enemy of God, he gets destruction of and by God. And it came to pass that when Je Jehu, he would be the next king, was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab, he's killing them. Thou shalt not kill. God told Jehu, that, that family, that man is so wicked, you get in there, you kill them all. Now, don't leave one breathing. So this is where we are now. In the history of Israel and Judah, Jehu has been ordered by God to kill them all. And found the princes of Judah and the sons of the brethren of Azahiah that ministered to Azahiah, he slew them. So he has slain, slain men of Judah in Israel because they don't belong in Israel. It'd be like a Christian going to a bar, there's a bar fight, and they end up dead. Well, you didn't belong there. That's not your territory. 
And he saw, and he saw Azahiah, the Jehu, and they caught him. Parentheses, here's a note. For he was hid in Samaria, Azahiah. He's of Jerusalem. He is hiding in the capital of Israel, Samaria. This is where all this mess and nonsense is. This is where Je uh, Jezebel has her prophets living at her table. Her 450 prophets are in Samaria having a meal with Jezebel, and here is Azahiah staying in the same place. And brought him to Jehu, who God says, I want you to go kill all the house of Ahab. And when he had slain him, they buried him. Because they said he is the son of Jehoshaphat, well, grandson. And this is one of the problems that people have in the Bible, believe it or not. It says son, he wasn't really a son. Grands, the Bible doesn't have grandparents, grandson, grandmother. Actually, no, it does. Uh, Timothy, mother, uh, grandma. But the grandparents are not listed in genealogies of the king. It's son. There shall not be a son of David that we're, it, it, it's not going to you know, David's going to have sons forever on the throne of Israel. Jesus Christ is the son of the family of David through the adoption of Joseph. Well, that's a far, 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 far grin. Great, 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 great grandchild, grandson. It's the same position. When you are in the family of the family, you are counted stew of the son of that family. Whether it be grand or that. So son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. Now who sought the Lord with all his heart, that's Jehoshaphat, that's not Azariah. So the house of Azariah had no power to keep still the kingdom. Because of his reference and his knowledge dealing with Ahab and the family. God says, hey, you're not going to fellowship with them if you do. You're going to fall with them. Here we go. But when Azahiah, that's when she's mentioned in verse 2, his mother, the mother of Azahiah saw that her son was dead by Jehu. She arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. She's killing all the men, all the males that can ascend that throne and sets herself on the throne. This is the only female queen of Israel or Noah. Now, as a high, excuse me, yeah, as a, no, Athila, she's of Israel. She's not of Judah, and now she's sitting on the Judah throne. And she's so wicked, she's not listed in the genealogy of Matthew chapter 1. When it lists the kings of, of, of Judah to Jesus Christ from David, she's omitted amongst three others or four others. She murders everybody to get to that throne so she can be in charge. Nice mother. But, Jehoshaphat, the daughter of the king took Joash, and he's going to be a great king, the son of Azahiah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain. Now, here's a type of Jesus Christ. When Herod orders all the children two years and under to be dead, Jesus Christ is taken into uh, Egypt, and he's hidden from the government from the death ordered by Herod. This is Moses too. When Moses is supposed to have been drowned in the, in the river, he's taken and hidden in, in bulrushes and found a Pharaoh's daughter. When you read about this killing of kings and one survives, now the entire does not go always 100%, but that's the type of Jesus Christ who is the king. So here is one boy that escapes under the hand of Philip. And look what it says, verse 11 again. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of the king, 
So this would be her I'm trying to think. Order. I don't know the word. Took Joash the son of Azahiah. She is the daughter to Azahiah. That that was the king. I'm trying to think. And stole him from among the king's sons, now dead, that were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber, bedroom. So Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Azahiah, no footnote there, parentheses mean footnote, hid him from Athila, so that she slew him not. And he was with them, hid in the house of God six years. Now, does that tell you a lot about Athaliah? If the only place where she's not going to go, the only place where we can hide this child, is in the house of God. Now, now, this child, Joab, becomes a type of Samuel. Where did Samuel spend his, his younger life? In the temple with Eli. He was with them hid in the house of God six years. And Athaliah reigned over the land. Wickedness. Wow. And we're going to take up Joash will be king next.